truth and reconciliation is the process of um, our country and all the people who live in it um, here coming to terms with what happened in the past and all the different impacts that that's had in the past and continues to have in the present. Um, so I think that's the truth part. Uh, the reconciliation is, is, I mean, the reconciliation is part of that. It's just an, an airing and an accepting of our shared history and then it's turning forward to the future. I think it's really important for our students because our students, you know, all students everywhere are living the impact of the past. Um, they're living in a present that was created because of the past. And until there's truth and reconciliation, there's no, no context for it. So, um, you know, I think, I think we, you know, part of truth and reconciliation is understanding that things aren't um, <clears throat> maybe the way that we'd all wish that they would be. And so the, the reasons for that are due to, you know, intentional colonial practices that have accumulated and created uh, real inequalities. So if we don't recognize that, then we're not recognizing the reality and the truth of people's lives today. So Indigenous students and people bear the consequences mostly of um, the history. And uh, um, if it can be acknowledged in schools, then that can at least um, allow people to understand maybe a bit more about their present circumstances, but also if they were already aware of them to, to, feel, um, to feel that recognition and that acceptance and uh, validated. And for non-Indigenous students, um, it's critically important too because uh, everyone needs to understand it and everybody needs to, uh, I think, learn about these things together so that they can understand each other better. Bringing Indigenous perspectives is really important and I think that as, as a teacher on, you know, experiencing truth and reconciliation, part of my journey was learning myself and so like figuring out what, what is indi our Indigenous perspectives and, um, um, and then figuring out a way to bring a variety to my students in different ways. So Indigenous voices in literature, Indigenous faces and images in art and media. Um, indigenous people in the form of like field trips or guest speakers if possible um, and you know at a school level making sure that there was those same things that you know that that presence and uh, an openness and a willingness to speak and an invitation an invitation for participation but not an expectation on the people who are out there whether they're in the classroom or in the community or on staff um, and not an expectation that they lead that sharing of perspective. You know, I think everybody will learn in different ways. So one of my biggest ways of learning things is reading. So I read, you know, I just read and read and read and read and read and I still read. And that's how I learn and that for me was a really rich way of, of gathering like a huge wide variety of perspectives. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of ways to learn besides reading and certainly like uh, like literature in the past wasn't like a medium of indigenous culture, but there certainly is like a huge body of literature right now, like fiction, nonfiction, all kinds uh, that I was able to learn from and then, you know, bring into classrooms. I think that was something that I did. Another thing that I found was important was definitely like uh, learning about the local community and then meeting uh, local people and doing that in as, you know, kind of a, you know, natural a way as possible. So, you know, that was easy for me working with a colleague who was able to, like, introduce me to lots of people and in, into lots of situations where I could learn. Um, and I took some risks. Yeah, I, took a, I went to a um, cultural sensitivity weekend. So that was a scary thing that I did that, that I found quite rewarding. You know, it got me onto the land with people whose land it was and who were able to share it in a way that they wanted to share it with me very intentionally. Um, and it was for, you know, they opened it up to other people like me, so I wasn't intruding. I was invited. I took the invitation and um, I learned a lot from it. So I think with the land, the first thing that everybody should understand is that there's, um, we're brought up, we being, you know, more myself as a non-Indigenous person brought up with one story of the land, right? Which is that it's owned either by the government or private individuals and here's how it works and that's the way it works. And I think that with, I think opening our eyes to the sharing land is to an idea that there's other people who think about the land differently 
uh, that they had a relationship with the land before these uh, other rules came along, and that going forward there needs to be a shared understanding, at least of, of the other of the way that we all look at the land, and that it may be different as a school or board. Then I think that's that's part of that that a shared responsibility means. Like not just that understanding, but um, establishing relationships where you can work with each other about how to best foster a new understanding going forward. So that means like how how we use the land as a teaching tool within our school board, how we um, uh, act when we're going out onto the land, and how we invite community members to help shape our students' understanding of it. Um, when I grew up, we had the Lord's Prayer and O Canada every morning. And um, you know, at this point in time, I th I think that this the the land acknowledgement is a symbolic recognition that um, that it's shared land, and so I think um, that it's important, and that the message that is shared out through repetition, I guess, is um, um, is a positive one in that sense. Uh, I think everybody needs to know that there's a lot of different versions of what is cultural appropriation. So I think you have to come up with your own definition as a teacher and then you also have to be mindful of what other people's might be. So I think you have to consider a huge range of it um, and not just say, well, no, here's my definition and that's why it's okay. So you have to be open to that. You know, I think the simple one is it's when culture is used for a specific purpose, like a culture that's not your own, is used for a specific purpose. And I think that's, it's open and it's vague, but I think that's kind of my working definition. And so then in a particular circumstance, it can lead to, well, okay, what's my purpose here? Is my purpose to demonstrate that I'm like, you know, doing reconciliation? Well, okay, like that's a purpose and you should be mindful of that because you have an agenda. Um, is your purpose to actually like explore what meanings there are for a particular thing for a particular group, okay, like that might sound like a more promising thing, but then it asks more questions like, what have you done to make sure that that's appropriate? <laughs>